so this is like the third time I've recorded this. All right, guys, sorry, just popping in real quick to let you guys know I apologize big time for the fact that this is all moving. Um, I'm trying to edit and I realized how much I moved when I made this video. So my apologies. Back to the video. Because I realized how much ranting I did in the last video and I was like, mm, no. But this video I'm making has been a lot of contemplation happening and I wanted to get it perfect for you guys. So I'm just gonna say that I'm trying to spread awareness. There might be some venting and I do apologize. I'm just really, really, really trying. So I feel like there needs to be some awareness about invisible illnesses and disorders and everything. And I'm gonna start by telling you mine. I have two of them. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which is EDS, as you guys know. And I have something called CCA, congenital contractual, I'm going to butcher this, archidactyly, or CCA for short. These are debilitating some days. I'm not going to lie. They are debilitating. So, with CCA, I have contractures because it messes with the Furbolin 2 gene which furbolin and proteins come together and they make thread-like materials to give you that elasticity that you have in your skin. Which is crazy because EDS is the exact opposite. It does with the collagen and it's the glue that holds everything together. So I either contract and dislocate something or I'm too loosey-goosey and I dislocate something. So I live in chronic pain. So do a lot of people with this disorder. With CCA, we have contractures, which I have. I don't know if you guys can see, but that line, like, ugh, I bend my hands the wrong way and they'll go back. Like that, it needs to be released. Meaning, I need to go into surgery and have it cut. I haven't chosen to do so though, I'll be completely honest. I haven't done it because I'm chicken. I don't want to deal with the pain. I feel like I live my life in pain, so therefore I'm not going to cause it anymore. Um, so, sorry, I'm looking down at my notes. <laughs> there is less than one in 10,000 people who have CCA. And then not to mention, y'all can do the research for the statistics on EDS type 3, which is hypermobility. It's still rare, um, but it's like common rare or something like that. So it's like right there on the border. I have two connective tissue disorders that are the exact opposite. Both of them cause pain in their patients, or sorry, in their victims. <laughs> um, doctors see in their patients all the time that they are in pain, they're chronic fatigue, they have fog, um, fog brain, or I like to call it mom brain because I got, I've had three kids, so whatever the case may be, but I joke a lot and I seem happy and joyful, but there's a lot of other stress that goes on throughout the day. Y'all don't see me relocating my joints on here. Only because I want some of y'all to keep your lunch down. Um, I am an ambulatory wheelchair user. Which means you may see me in a wheelchair. Um, at the mall. And I might stand up to get something off the shelf doesn't mean I can't walk. It just means I don't have the stamina to keep it up. I mean, there are days, though, where I am bedridden. I was bedridden the other, I think it was last week, for two days. These disorders that I have, 
that your friends may or may or may not have that are around you, they're invisible. They they aren't seen. So they appear happy and normal, but we're not. I mean, we're probably happy, you know, because I would like to think, like, I do. A lot of people who have these disorders try to live their life to the fullest. Um, you know, I try to be happy. I try to stay positive. But there are a lot of things that people don't realize. We have a lot of doctors that monitor us. A lot. I have so many. It is ridiculous. Um, and both of these disorders, you have a 50% chance of passing down to your kids. So for these, I'm going to call them zebras. That's what we are. We, we're medical anomalies, if you say, but we also have to worry about when I started having kids, I didn't know I had these. All I know is I lived in pain every day and I thought that was normal. I thought that's how everybody lived. Now, I can't speak for other people because I don't know. Um, all I know is about me. So when I got diagnosed, it was shortly after I had a car accident in 2017. Actually, it wasn't shortly, I lied. It was a long time after I had a car accident. In 2017, my son was three months old. I had gone, seen multiple doctors, and we couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I wasn't healing. I, it, nothing we did was working. <clears throat> I eventually went to see a hematologist. He found out that I did not have any blood B12, which is used to heal and repair and help with fatigue. I had nothing in my B12 reservoir. So I went on injections, which I still receive to this day. Thank goodness, because they are night and day difference. When I have it and when I don't. So I have a B12 anemia is what they call it. Which, okay, not a problem. So we found out after that that they'd run every test in the book except you can't run a test for Ehlers Danlos type 3. So that's when I got diagnosed with that. Then it wasn't until my second son, Aiden, which you guys have heard about him and everything. If you haven't, um, he was stillborn. But we had found out that I was, I had, I don't remember the name of it, but basically your pregnancy were, and your pregnancy where you throw up so much. Um, I was on constant IV fluids, um, hypergravim maybe, I think that's what it was called. But um, I had that and so I got sent to an MFM who ran genetics and we found out I had CCA, which is my contractures, which is why um, Aiden was stillborn. And so doing all this research on CCA, trying to figure it out that, and that was in 2019, guys. So, my whole life I had been having problems. I didn't get diagnosed with one until 2017, the other in 2019. These disorders you get diagnosed with in your 20s most of the time. Most of the time. Sometimes it's older, sometimes it's a little bit younger. But for the most part, it's in your 20s to mid-20s. So... Um, I was right in that range where, you know what, they've ruled everything out. This is the only possible thing it could be. So, when we found out we had conceived with Everly, we had 
definitely opted to do a genetics panel after she was born because we knew the odds of both. She didn't have any markers, which was the greatest day of our lives. So, but my whole point is that sometimes some people may ask, well, why do y'all choose to have kids? Sometimes we have kids and we don't know about it. Um, so, like I said, I knew about EDS and we were prepared to do what needed to be done. We did not know about CCA for Aiden. She's like, I didn't know about EDS with Tristan. So, and then with Everly, um, everything had happened so fast when we had conceived with her and everything like that. So, um, but that's that. But yeah, I mean, it's, so some of us don't know and we conceive, um, but there's 50% chance of, for, with both, um, if you conceive and have kids, there's 50% chance you, they could get it. Um, we have comorbidities. Um, I have dysautonomia. I have suspected gastroparesis. I'm horrible about going to the doctors. So I don't want to hear about, oh, it's suspected. Yeah, it's been suspected for a long time. Um, I go on liquid diets quite frequently because I can't keep anything down except for liquid. And no, that does not mean putting my food in a blender. But because <laughs> I know someone's going to ask if I put my food in a blender. The answer is no. Um, but sometimes people get gastroparesis so bad that they're on G tubes and NJ tubes and everything and doctors and family and friends need to be aware of all of this because we have a lot of people who tell us, well, you don't look like anything's wrong with you. And y'all don't look stupid. Sorry. I should probably edit that out. But, that being said, it's, we don't need to look sick for there to be something wrong. Y'all wouldn't tell someone who has depression or schizophrenia or bipolar disorder or anything like that, that y'all don't look depressed, you don't look schizophrenic, you don't look like you have bipolar disorder. So it's not okay to do that to your friends who have invisible illnesses. Doctors, that's to you. I'm looking at y'all because y'all do that a lot. Y'all are very dismissive and we don't need that. Not in the world we're in now. So, give grace. Doctors, listen to your patients. I'm trying to make this short because I'm right 13 minutes in. And if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to just comment um, your thoughts, like I said, I've tried to make this quick. I don't know if I hit everything. I have really bad brain fog. So, I may have just gone on a random rant. But anyways... Give grace to people. Just doctors, listen to your patients. And if y'all have questions, don't be scared to ask us. Us zebras love nothing more than to educate people on the illnesses and disorders and all the crazy stuff we have going on. We love the education. We love it. And we love telling people about it. Because that means that there's one more person who knows. One more person to spread awareness. So, love you guys. I'm sorry. This was like super serious and not fun and you didn't even get to see the kids. <laughs> but, talk to you guys later. Bye.